Team of ex-Google and Tesla engineers just dropped an open-source operating system that could turn every humanoid robot on Earth into part of a single connected hive mind, which could be the greatest leap in technology or the last mistake we ever make. A new $5,300 humanoid is built to live in your home, remember you, and adapt to your personality. And China is rolling out a trillion-dollar plan to put intelligent machines in factories, hospitals, and homes across the country. Wild times for robotics, so let's get into it. Let's start with one of the most talked about launches, OpenMind and their OM1 operating system. This is a company built by former Google and Tesla engineers, and they're trying to do for humanoid robots what Android did for smartphones. Instead of every robot having its own closed, proprietary system that developers have to code for separately, OM1 is open source and hardware agnostic. That means you could have different robot bodies, from a warehouse bot to a humanoid assistant, all running the exact same intelligence without having to rewrite code for each one. The system integrates advanced AI models for perception, decision-making, and movement, so you're not just getting basic commands, you're getting adaptive, multimodal intelligence. The big twist here is their companion protocol called Fabric. Think of it as the communication layer between robots, a decentralized network where they can securely share what they learn. A robot in a hospital figuring out a faster way to deliver supplies could instantly pass that skill on to another unit halfway across the world. This isn't just about speed, it's about creating a hive mind of connected machines. And yes, there are serious security and privacy questions here because open networks are always a target, but the upside is huge if it works. They've just secured $20 million in funding to make it happen. Pantera Capital led the round, and even Pi Network, the crypto crowd, jumped in hinting at a possible blockchain element for trust and traceability in robot coordination. The founders are calling OM1 a plug-and-play OS for intelligent machines, and they've built it using Python under an MIT license. That makes it easy for developers to dive in, experiment, and deploy on everything from robot dogs to humanoids. And yes, they actually have a fleet of OM1-powered quadrupeds shipping next month, with a bigger rollout planned for October. What's interesting is how this could shake up the competitive landscape. Tesla has its in-house bot OS, Figure AI is running powerful open source vision language models on their Helix platform, and Boston Dynamics is still the gold standard for movement. But OM1's approach is more about building a massive developer ecosystem than trying to dominate hardware. They're even partnering with educational institutions to get OM1 into robotics curriculums, which could mean the next wave of robotics engineers grows up on this platform instead of a proprietary one. Now, Fabric is the real gamble here. It's inspired by blockchain, decentralized verification, secure data exchange, but the challenge is latency. Robotics needs real-time responsiveness, and blockchain systems historically don't do real-time well. Early demos look promising, but until we see it in high-pressure, unpredictable environments, it's still a question mark. October's broader launch will be critical. That's when OpenMind will need to prove that an open source ecosystem can outpace and out-innovate closed systems. If they pull it off, it could change the balance of power in robotics entirely. If they stumble, it'll just reinforce the idea that vertical integration is the safer bet. But real quick, if you've been following all this AI news and thinking, okay, this is cool, but what can I actually do with it? You're definitely not alone. That's why we created the AI Income Blueprint. It shows you seven ways regular people are using AI to build extra income streams on the side. No tech skills needed, and you can automate everything pretty easily. The guide contains simple proven methods using tools I often talk about on this channel. Download it free by clicking the link in the description. Now, while OpenMind is betting on software unification, Engine AI is coming from a completely different angle. Consumer-friendly humanoids. They've just announced the SAO2, a humanoid that's 1.25 meters tall, 25 kilos, and costs $5,300. For perspective, that's cheaper than Unitree's R1, which starts at $5,900.
The SAO2 isn't trying to be an industrial powerhouse. This is about personality, companionship, and fitting into your daily life. It's got 26 plus two degrees of freedom, so yes, it can move its fingers naturally, gesture when it talks, and do those little micro movements that make conversations feel human. Inside, there's a built-in large language model, so it remembers context, adapts over time, and even shapes its personality based on your interaction. It's not just spitting out scripted lines, it learns how you like to talk. Two HD cameras up front handle object detection, face tracking, and spatial awareness. The speakers are high fidelity, so when it reads you a recipe or plays music, it doesn't sound tinny or robotic. And because it's aimed at homes, it's light enough to move easily and friendly enough in design that it doesn't look out of place in a living room. The guy behind Engine AI, Zhao Tongyang, used to run the humanoid robotics program at Xpeng, the EV giant. He left in 2023, launched Engine AI, and now he's competing directly with his old company. The SAO1, their first model, came out in July 2024 and was aimed at education and research, priced around 5,400. The SAO2 is lighter, friendlier, and far more geared toward personal and family use. They're teasing the full reveal at the 2025 World Robot Conference in Beijing, with pre-orders and global rollout to follow. While SAO2 is about approachable companionship, Fourier's new GR3 takes emotional intelligence in robots to a whole other level. They call it a care bot, and it's built with something they've branded the Full Perception Multimodal Interaction System. That's vision, audio, and tactile feedback, all feeding into a real-time emotional processing engine. BR3 stands at 1 meter 65, weighs 71 kilos, and has 55 degrees of freedom. The design is soft touch, warm tones, automotive grade upholstery, clearly meant to feel familiar, not industrial. The animated facial interface and natural gait give it a sense of presence rather than the cold detachment most robots still carry. What's wild is how it responds to human interaction. It can localize voices with a four mic array, lock eye contact, recognize faces, and detect touch through 31 pressure sensors. Touch its arm and it might blink, subtly move its head or react with an emotional gesture. It's running a dual path brain, fast thinking for instant reflexive actions and slow thinking that pulls on a large language model for deeper contextual conversation. It's built for real-world environments, homes, hospitals, elder care facilities, and can adapt its locomotion style to the situation. They even have modes like bounty walk or fatigue mode to make its movement feel more relatable. The battery is hot swappable so it can run continuously, and its modular design plus developer-friendly APIs mean it can be tailored for different industry. Aurier isn't selling it just as a product, they're pushing it as a platform for human-robot integration. All of these launches are happening right alongside a massive push in China to create a unified embodied intelligence ecosystem. Just a couple of days ago, at the 2025 World Robot Conference in Beijing, they held the Embodied Intelligence Industry Finance Ecosystem Cooperation and Exchange event. Quite a mouthful, but it's a big deal. This wasn't just a showcase. It was government officials, researchers, finance executives, and industry leaders all in one room talking about how to take embodied intelligence from lab demos to nationwide deployment. They officially launched the Embodied Intelligence Professional Committee of the China Information Association, basically a permanent body to coordinate between government, academia, industry, and finance. Speakers hammered on the same themes. China's no longer just following global tech trends. It's leading in ecosystem building. They want to push embodied intelligence as the key way AI integrates into the real economy. Think of it as the nervous system for the next wave of automation. Not just single robots doing isolated jobs, but coordinated intelligent fleets in manufacturing, logistics, healthcare, and even homes. There was a strong focus on breaking bottlenecks in technology, building a full chain ecosystem and creating replicable deployment models. One of the standout points came from Wang Zhengqiao of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, who said that embodied AI brains face data scarcity and fragmented scenarios. His solution? Integrate simulation with real-world training to create closed-loop data systems so skills learned in virtual environments translate seamlessly into physical ones. 
Look, most people still think AI is some distant future, but regular folks are already using it to build income streams quietly, behind the scenes. If you want to see how they're doing it without tech skills or quitting their job, download the AI Income Blueprint. It's totally free, the link's in the description, but it won't stay free forever. On the finance side, CICC Capital projected embodied intelligence could be a trillion level market after smart vehicles, potentially hitting 24.7 trillion yuan by 2050. They're positioning capital to accelerate commercialization with banks like China CITD rolling out full life cycle financial services for robotics companies. Loans, investment loan linkage, the works, they even signed ecological cooperation agreements between companies like AUBO Intelligence, Shengxi Tianan, Nine Chapters Cloudpole, and Huixi Intelligence to build an embodied intelligent robot training ground. The idea is to have a standardized environment for testing and improving these systems with unified rules and data compliance baked in. All right, let me know what you think. Which of these developments do you see having the biggest impact? And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.